Teaching in the 21st century increasingly involves technology. But how can educators be sure new high-tech tools will be a boon and not a bane for the classroom? There's so much noise out there in the world of education. The webs is full of stuff. Teachers don't have time to go surfing around and finding things, and most of what they find won't be very good on average. Well, this looks fun and this looks good, but I have no idea if it's really good because there's no assessment data. So it would be really nice to actually know whether some of these things worked or not. We need to build a honest uh, knowledge base of what doesn't work, what does work, and why. The way we have in science itself, I call it making out of science out of education. One area where researchers are trying to make a science out of education is with computer games. The goal is to figure out which ones help students learn, and then how to get those games into the classroom. What happens is you get a grant, you develop the game, you test it out on a few classrooms or whatever it was that you said you do in the grant, and as soon as the grant is over, well, the game just goes on your shelf. Uh, it could go on your little office shelf, or it can go on your personal website, or it goes somewhere, but it's essentially parked. Uh, and there really isn't much of a mechanism to get that academically developed content out there. And this is one of the things that I'm really concerned about because after you've proven that it's totally changed the lives of the 40 kids you tested it on, it's really a crime not to have it get out there and influence more people. In contrast to that, the video game market is just huge. A single game like World of Warcraft has 10 million players. The Sims was bought 100 million times. Now contrast to that to the total number of people in the higher education system getting degrees every year in math and science, technology and engineering, that number is about 450,000. So we're talking scales of over 10, sometimes over 100 that a single game can reach. So we can reach lots and lots and lots of people. And then the question becomes, can we reach them with something that has pedagogical meaning? And that was really the voyage of discovery for me, trying to figure out whether games could teach as well as entertain. Research shows they can, but teachers often don't have time for games unless they help students perform better on standardized tests. That's because funding for schools, at least in the United States, depends on test scores. What we have now in science is teaching to lots of bad tests, cheap multiple choice word recognition tests that are destroying science education for kids in the United States. So one of our articles uh, in this issue is going to be about what we know about good assessment and how can we make tests to be tests that are valid, that is testing things we want kids to know, and even more importantly to me, driving teachers to teach important things about science or about mathematics rather than things that will help pass an exam that's measuring the wrong thing. So national and international testing agencies are exploring how to use technology to test more complicated concepts and still score the responses efficiently. But that will take a lot of money. The real problem I see is that uh, any real progress to be made in education is a long-term investment. Our nation is not very good at long-term investments. And so we don't ever uh, make the kind of investments that we really need for long-term success. And long-term success for educational games requires the same thing, money. As to whether the money is coming in, it's coming in little bits, but not quite in the correct buckets in order to be used effectively. So let me give you an example. A lot of the games currently being developed are being developed by a professor and his grad student who are starting uh, a little side venture, might be eligible for SBIR money or Small Business Initiative for Research money. Uh, that money is about the right size um, to finance a game. It's it, about the right stage in the development of a company to create its first or second or third game. Um, it certainly would encourage gains for the scientific community because all of the science agencies have this SBR money. But right now, it takes so long to get a grant approved that these little game companies go belly up in the year of waiting for a grant <laughs> uh, before they ever find out whether they can make the game or not. So even shortening the timeline for review on some of these grants would open up a lot of opportunities for creating content. But whether it's games, tech-based assessments, or any other educational technology, teachers must be sure it will actually help in their classrooms, not be a distraction or usurp the teacher's role. I'm hoping that this issue of science will help stimulate a conversation about getting education technology and people who both use and develop it 
develop it more effectively studied and employed and recognized as an opportunity but not a cure-all for our schools. Teachers need a much larger voice in our school system and both in their schools where they need to work as teams to try to you know, produce a community that will improve their school, but also, very importantly, in the school, dis school district and in the state, which makes most of the education policy. Read about educational games, tech-based assessment, and many other kinds of educational technology in the January 2nd issue of Science. Science is published by AAAS, the Science Society.